Hello guys, this is Bet the Tech here and I'm bringing you a video on how I was able to pass the Network Plus in just two weeks worth of studying. And now you might be saying to yourself, hey, is that even possible? Um, I did do it. I did commit myself to a, a decent amount of time. Um, keep in mind that I also have a family, I have a full-time job, and that I have other responsibilities as well. And so I'm not just no-lifing the certification. It is completely possible if you have the background that I have or maybe a little less that you're able to complete the studying and um, the prerequisites for the certification within that time frame. Now, we'll start off with why I decided to take the Network Plus. Um, earlier last year in 2023, I decided that I was going to get the CompTIA uh, trifecta, which includes the A+, plus, the Network Plus, and the Security Plus. And I kind of just did that to um, become a fully well-rounded um, IT generalist. Um, I think it's a good idea to do that before you decide to specialize in any in any specialization, whether that be cybersecurity, networking, cloud, uh, other things like that. Now, you don't have to. Um, you can definitely just directly specialize or you can just start off with the Network Plus or start off with the Security Plus, um, but it does make things a little more difficult. And I want to make sure there's absolutely zero gaps in my knowledge for when I um, choose to uh, progress in my career. Like I said, I do have a decent amount of experience already. I've been at my current um, fully IT position for about seven months. Um, I spent four years active duty in the army um, doing IT radio satcom stuff. Now I'm, I do that in the reserves as well. I also recently completed the A plus about a few months ago, and then I've completed the Google IT support professional certificate that can be found on Coursera a few months ago as well. So I have a decent amount of background knowledge and, and a decent amount of experience um, regarding all things IT already. I don't really, I didn't really have too much networking specific knowledge before this. Um, but when you're studying for the Network Plus and when you're taking these these courses that I'm going to outline later on, they kind of are under the assumption that you already have the knowledge of um, essentially the A plus equivalent. So if you have the knowledge in the A plus, then I wouldn't recommend taking the cert. You can just move directly to Network Plus I felt like I didn't, so I, I fully did the A plus and went at, went ahead and got uh, certified on that. Um, we'll start off with the first resource that I used to complete um, the studying for this. Um, I'll outline it in a, in a timeline fashion as well. The first resource was the first week. The second resources was the second week. So the first resource was the Total Seminars um, Mike Myers Udemy course for Network Plus, and it's about 21 and a half hours and it's a really long time to complete in a week um, unless you have a bunch of time. Uh, like I said, again, I have a decent amount of responsibilities that I have to tend to. I have a full-time job. I have a family, things like that. I don't really have 21 hours in a week to just be able to throw at it. So how did I get around that? I watched the course at 2.5 times speed. And that's a perk that I that I can do. Um, I, other people can do it as well. If you already have a background in IT or if you're comfortable ingesting uh, videos at, at that speed, I'd recommend to do that. Even if you watch it at 1.25 speed, if you accumulate the total hours, you're knocking out a big portion of the, the total video course length. And, and so playing around with the speeds can actually significantly decrease the amount of time you're spending on the course. I watch pod podcasts. YouTube videos and stuff at like two, three times speed all the time. So it was a little easier for me. Um, so it might be difficult, especially if you're initially learning the, learning the concepts for the first time. You might have to rewind and, and go back and rewatch things. And if you're doing that, I'd recommend just to watch them at the normal speed or maybe 1.25 or 1.5. Um, but like I said, that's a huge way to be able to complete some of the resource, uh, complete the video course a lot quicker than you might think. 2.5 times speed. So instead of 21 and a half hours, it's, um, I'm not going to do public math, but you can assume it. I'll put it up here. How, how much time I saved and how much time it is now. The second resource that I used in combination, um, which I did on the second week of the timeline is the Jason Dion practice tests on Udemy. And so this overall guideline of using the video course and then using the practice tests, I've done it three times now. I did it for the 1101, 1102 for the A+, and then I did it now for the Network Plus exam. And 
I think it works wonders. I think it works perfectly for the way I learn. Um, like I said, I'm explaining the way I did this. Um, it could not work for you or it could work for you. Um, if you're a visual learner with a video course, it, um, if you are, are able to learn well with practice tests as well, I recommend this, this method. And so the way I utilize the practice tests is I would take the practice test for the first time and I'd be able to pinpoint the things that I needed to study more on. And then I would, um, because the practice tests explain what you got wrong, what the answers actually explains every answer that's wrong and every answer that's right. And so I went through every single question um, for the first test. And then I did that for the second one, did that for the third, did that for the fourth, and then so on until the sixth. And by that time I was getting around a score of uh, between mid eighties. And so that this is the portion of time where you're going to be spending the most amount of time. Um, if I didn't know something, if it didn't explain it that well in the description for the exam, I would Google it. I would just Google the concept and, and learn about it then. Um, but to round out the resources, the video course is just to ingest the knowledge into your head. It's to just really get that into, into your head for the first time. I wasn't really taking notes. I wasn't really like trying to fully invest uh, my brain power in all of it. I was just trying to get the topics and, and the, the concepts in my head for the first time. And then in the practice test portion, you're kind of doing that repetition and, and that active recall with the tests and you, and you're, um, you're going over into more detail and kind of ingraining it into your head at that point. Now, after you've completed that and you're getting mid eighties on the Jason Dion practice tests. Um, I would say you're good to, to go ahead and, and pass the exam. Um, I, let's say you are not doing mid eighties on the practice exam, but you've already taken them. I wouldn't recommend just retaking the practice practice exams because you're just, um, remembering the questions at that point. I'd recommend to use a different set of practice exams, whether that be, um, professor Messers or, or someone else's there's, there's some that you can Google online as well they're all going to functionally work the same. Some just cost more, some are a little bit better, but they are roughly the same thing. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, as well as if you want a free version for the Network Plus video course, you can use Professor Messers, which is on YouTube for free. So you don't have to um, do the Mike Myers one on Udemy. You can use Professor Messers absolutely free and you can still do the two time speed um, that I was doing um, to get through that on YouTube. Okay, so if you've gone through that and you're prepared to take the exam, I'll give you a few tips regarding specifically for me, I took the test online. So um, make sure you're there on time. If you are late, you have the potential of losing your voucher. And so that kind of sucks. Make sure you're there on time, specifically earlier, actually. Um, and you're going to, the way it works is you kind of uh, set your equipment up, you do your test, um, the test of your equipment. And then you wait for a proctor. So depending on how busy it is, um, how many proctors there are available, it might take you a while. For me, it honestly took me like 20 minutes to find a proctor. So I started 20 minutes later than I thought I was going to. And so to keep that in mind when you're when you're starting the test and if you have to start by a certain time to maybe start a little earlier, it gives you that option to start to start earlier than the allotted time as well. I have a quiet space. A lot of people might not. And so the option to go in person to a testing center is there as well. They kind of do everything for you. So all you have to do is show up, bring your ID and you're good to go. Now, during the exam, I was pretty confident, honestly, it was my third CompTIA exam and I'm pretty knowledgeable on how CompTIA words things and things like that. And so I was pretty comfortable, especially from taking the A plus, like I said, it's pretty useful to take the A plus or maybe like ITF or a different um, CompTIA exam just to get the hang of how they word their questions and, and being more comfortable in that environment. So I was pretty comfortable. I had, done, I had studied, I knew I was prepared for the exam and I scored a 739. You needed 720 to pass. So it was pretty close there on the edge, um, but I was pretty comfortable I, uh, even when I submitted the test. Now, some tips for the actual exam. Um, when you're taking the exam, and this is told, said by everyone, but if you haven't heard it yet, most likely you want to skip the PBQs. So PBQs, performance-based questions will 
uh, there'll be about three to five before um, the multiple choice questions. And the best way to do that is because they take quite a while and you might get stumped and you want to make sure that you have enough time to get the rest of the multiple choice questions as, as there's a lot up to 90, uh, usually between 75 to 80. And you only have 90 minutes to complete the test. So you're going to have to complete these multiple choice questions um, in less than a minute, more, more likely around 30, 20 seconds. And so I went through the multiple choice and they have a flagging option. And so make sure that it, when, if the answers you're confident in, you don't flag. But if you're hesitant on an answer, if you're like, I, I'm honestly guessing, I would flag the question. And when you flag the question at the end, it lets you go through and, and go um, review all flagged questions. And so you have that opportunity to, let's say you recalled some information after um, question five, but you flagged it. Um, you can go back to it and uh, change your answer because of the information that you recalled. Or maybe the wording of a different question actually got you to remember the question from the earlier question. So flag the ones you're not 100% certain on. Even if it's that, even if it's like 25% of the questions, just flag them all to make sure that you can go back and uh, review them. And so when you, when you finish all the multiple choice questions on the initial run, you can go back and do the PBQs. And don't take too long on those either because you can get stumped. I, I noticed I was getting stumped on, on like the first few and I was like, oh, I, I got to just move on to the, to the, to the next PBQ. And so I did that. I got through all the PBQs. And then after the PBQs, I went through and reviewed the final questions. I did spend the entire 90 minutes on the test. <laughs> I went down to the last second reviewing questions uh, just because I was, uh, I wanted to make sure I was good to go. And uh, like I said, I scored a 739. So I was happy with that. So all in all, if you follow my guidelines, um, the timeline might be a little off based on your experience, um, but I really recommend the way I've been studying for these as it's worked really well for me. Um, but if you're not a video course learner, if you not don't do well with practice tests, then it might not be for you. And you might want to either watch another video of some, how someone else did it, or I know reading the books. So buying the books on Amazon, I'll put a few links down there in, in the description. Um, some people are book readers. I can't sit still and read a book. So the video course is the way I go. And, and, and that helps me a lot. And so I'm really happy to now be progressing to the security plus in the CompTIA trifecta. And so I will be hopefully putting a video out on how I pass that in the upcoming months. And I'm excited to, to share my journey with you as well. If you have any questions or concerns regarding the video or anything that I might've said, or maybe you you have a specific question, put it in the comments below. I'll be answering 99% of the questions. So I'm excited um, to be on this journey with you guys and i um, signing off. If you do need to complete the A+, like I said, you can watch my video on the A+, 1101 and then 1102 exam here. Have a good one.